So if it's truly mission critical, if, if giving our employees the opportunity to express themselves, to be part of something, to make change, to, um, you know, to lead the grassroots movements, then it has to be in the same category as everything else that we do that's mission critical to delivering the best value for our customers, delivering the best value for our shareholders. That when we get this right, when organizations support associates to navigate the complexities of caregiving in ways that are supportive and humane, it builds loyalty. It is win-win. We need to have our DE&I um, uh, representation, those folks at the table, at the beginning, as we implement the AI projects. Recognize that while well, reconciliation is important, it's also integral because it's going to help us solve the problems that we have today so that we can all have a tomorrow. Because I know for myself for so long growing up, I didn't feel welcome in a lot of sporting events and, and even talking about sports because I always got really talked down to. And I know what I'm talking about when I talk about hockey, but a lot of men don't think so. When you support and uplift one group, you just naturally support and uplift other groups and other individuals. So as an organization, when we're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, all boats rise. And what became very, very clear is when you have women and people with diverse mindsets impacting your decision making that elevated your performance. Diversity in general breeds creativity, breeds innovation, breeds productivity. And we know when employees feel psychologically safe, not only do they thrive, but they actually increase their output. And there's an, an also added benefit to society on a whole as well. We have an opportunity and I think we have um, a responsibility, quite frankly, to look to young people who are coming into our businesses now because they're the ones that are going to really drive the change next.